Okay, in this video, we're going to continue on in our series um, of basic civil 3D design. And this is going to be just a basic bridge design. Um, and in this video, we're going to focus on creating a horizontal alignment um, for our roadway. So I've already opened our survey file, or at least our civil base file, which has our survey external referenced in. Um, as you can see, it's all kind of one thing. Um, and so what we need to do is basically establish a center line for our new project. <clears throat> kind of the general rule of thumb here um, would be to follow the existing center line of the roadway. There's an actual road there. By following the existing center line, generally we can mitigate um, right away issues um, and different things like that. But um, at least in Oklahoma, um, we have section lines, um, which is shown in blue here, and then there's a certain amount of statutory right-of-way um, surrounding that. In this region, it's 33 feet. So that's kind of the region you have to work with before you need to acquire new right-of-way outside these bounds. Um, so putting it back on section, fitting as much of it inside of that statutory right-of-way as possible, um, is always beneficial but it's not always practical um, based on the current alignment and sometimes it just doesn't fit um, so what we're gonna do here <coughs> is we're just gonna create a simple alignment based on the center line of the roadway and one way to find the center line of the roadway normally your contours you'll see have this V shape as they go for one, again, remember most of your roads are crowned, and so your contour will kind of have this V-notch as you go along, and that kind of guides you along the center line. But what we're going to do, we'll just create a polyline, and right now we're just going to actually start it back here, and we'll click on this endpoint. And then let's just say if we came all the way down to here, kind of on the far end of our survey, and just if we just drew a single line no vertices um, internally and how well does that fit the center line of the existing roadway so it seems like it's holding up pretty good pretty much center line of the existing bridge um, which is good and it, you see it deviates a little bit over here um, <clears throat> but I'd be willing to live with that at least for now um, that seems like a fairly straightforward um, center line. Now we can look and see, turn our geolocation on, and we can see the roadway is fairly straight. It kind of narrows and curves slightly here and then just kind of widens out in this section. Um, but for the most part, it's relatively straight through here. Now again, we're probably eight feet off of section or so, um, but you can see the section line is, is all the way over to the other side of the road. So for now, we're going to keep this as our center line. So I'll make that a different color so we can see it a little bit better. <clears throat> but right now, all we've done is just draw a polyline. What we want to do is create a civil 3D object. And so far, we haven't really talked about civil 3D objects versus just typical drawing, drawing objects. Um, but your civil 3D objects are going to be the basis for your design. So you'll have things like alignments, profiles from alignments, surfaces, which we have discussed before. We have feature lines, we have pipe networks, assemblies, and corridors. And we'll go into all of these as we move along. But we're going to start using, this is again our tool space. This will become much more relevant as we move forward. And this is where our civil 3D objects are, will be stored. Okay, so <clears throat> excuse me. what we want to do, and for reference, on the home tab is where we want to be, but in this create design section of the home tab, this is where a lot of our design work will come from. Okay, so there are keyboard shortcuts for these, um, but since these are newer features, it's a little bit easier to just click on them up here. So we're going to come to our alignment <clears throat> drop down, and there's a lot of different 
options. And there's a couple different things um, we can, and two main choices we can use. We can either come into the alignment creation tools and manually create our alignments, or we can create an alignment from objects, which is handy sometimes because it'll create it from lines, polylines, curves we've already created. So for instance, let's say we could just click on that, create alignment from objects. And then it just says select the first line or object. So I'm going to click on our yellow line and right click. Now, <clears throat> sometimes, well every time it will pop up with a arrow and it points to the direction of the alignment from as far as stationing goes. For the most part, and based on Oklahoma County standards, whenever you're putting in your stationing, you want to go south to north and west to east if, if you have different options. So right now this is pointing north to south, so we want to reverse this. Okay, and it doesn't show the arrow flipping um, until you move it around there, but it automatically comes up. So we can name our alignment, and normally, I go project name and then just put CL for center line. Type, there's a lot of different types. This is going to be a center line. It's kind of an old way of doing things. It's not 100% necessary, but normally your starting station is going to be 10 plus a pair. Um, and so we'll keep that standard. Um, so we want our alignment style to be proposed because this is our proposed new alignment. Alignment layer. Um, it's always good to put it on a separate layer and there should be one built in here that is let's see, C, road, center, and in for new. So we're gonna click that, click OK, OK. And it can be whatever you want, but this is kind of the standard way of, of how we're doing things. So alignment label sets, and again, this is based on what our predetermined labels are built in, and you can change these however you want um, or create them. We're going to use the ODOT label set. And here's a couple other things. So you can add curves between tangents, um, but we don't have any tangents, um, and we don't need any curves right now. So we're just going to uncheck that box. And then also... I don't want it to erase the existing entity, the polyline we created. I want to leave that alone. So just in case and for reference. Okay, so I'm going to uncheck that box. Now another thing we can do here is set a design criteria. <clears throat> we can set a design speed and then we can check this box to allow AutoCAD to evaluate our alignment and down the road our profile based on the Ashto criteria um, which is very helpful in your design and helps from having to constantly look up these values. We're going to set this at a 40 mile an hour speed limit and we will use a criteria based design. So AutoCAD's already got this built in so there are other files you can use um, but, and we probably maybe should update to the 2018 standard, but for right now we're just going to base it on what it's got in here. Um, and there's different design check sets, but we're going to leave it as standard. So we hit OK. And now if you notice, we have an alignment. And you can see here's some stationing. So right now, you notice the stationing is only every 500 feet and then start and end. Okay, but we have a different feature, and now when we click on this, if you note in your properties over here, it doesn't say polyline anymore, it says an alignment. Okay, and it's got all of our information we just typed in, the style, the name, it's got colors, it's got line types, and it's got all our geographic reference points, so the beginning and ending stations, things like that. <clears throat> so that's a quick, dirty, easy way um, to do this. And if you had a very set single line polyline alignment like that, that would be a really good way to do it. Um, I'm actually going to just delete this to show you a different way. 
And so now the alignment's gone. We still have our polyline. Okay, but we have no alignment anymore. So the other way to do this is to come back to alignment and instead of creating it from the object, we click alignment creation tools. <clears throat> now instead of it having a select an object, we just immediately get to the same um, dialog box um, that we had before. So we're going to have to refill this information in real quick. So it's still center line. We want proposed. Zeroed. Oops, sorry. Zeroed center new. Alignment labels O dot label set. Okay. So now nothing happened. But now we have an alignment layout tools box. And so within this, it allows, it has all the tools to create an alignment. You can set points of intersection, you can delete them, you can create different line types here, and different curve types here. Okay? For a single straight alignment here, we just want to draw a fixed line. So now we can come to our original point here, click, and see now we can click. Now we could create multiple vertices in here if we wanted, but we're just going to go here. And you see how that basically created our same, same alignment as before. Now, just for reference, and I just wanted to show you this, I'll get it back to normal in a minute, but let's just... to explain a little bit more how these work, these tools work. So say I wanted to continue this on over here. I could click this again, come here, and create another section. And it's always good whether you're doing profiles or alignments, every time you create a little section to right click, accept it, and then do it again. Okay, because sometimes if you click and you keep clicking, it, it will mess up. Now, a couple things to show you. So these are just tangent lines. And obviously, if this was truly our alignment, this wouldn't be allowed, right? We would need a curve here of some sort. Um, <clears throat> and so that's where we come into our curve um, options. Now, there's all different kinds of curves. Um, and it's more how AutoCAD can create these curves for you. Um, so there are fixed curves that are set in space. They are exactly where you put them. And no matter what you change with the alignment, you'll have to physically go in and change that curve. And then there are floating curves, which kind of can move around a little bit. Um, but the, the one I like to use the most um, is the free curve fillet. And what this does is it takes two, two lines of tangency so our two straight lines here, and if we clicked on one of them, so say we want a curve inside here. We click on the first one, we click on the second one, and then now we can specify a radius inside. And so it's set a default 200, so let's just see what that does. Right click, and see now we have created a horizontal curve here, within here. Now there are grip edits within here. You can move, we can drag our curve and we can move it around. Now you see how there's only a certain limit where this curve, it goes away at a certain point because it's becoming too large. Okay, we can keep dragging it and we can even drag it a little bit inside of here. Um, but basically once it can't solve AutoCAD can't solve for it because you're essentially creating a straight line over here. So we can make it something like that. We can even move these points down and up in a similar fashion. Okay. But the nice thing when you use the free curve fillet, so say I want to move this PI point of intersection. If you see when I move that, it's automatically adjusting the curve 
as I move it because that curve will always be tangent to these two lines. Okay, so we could do the same thing for this one. Hit OK, and so now we have a curve here. So that's kind of how you can manipulate an alignment. Um, but obviously for this project, we don't need that type of alignment. So what we can do is come in and start deleting sub-entities. Now you want to delete from the end because if you start deleting inside, um, it can create gaps. Now what you can do with the free curve fillets is you can delete that sub-entity and it goes back to just two regular lines. But we're going to do that and I actually want to start here and delete these where I only have that single line here. And now I can bring that back how I wanted from the get-go. Okay, So now I have created this. One thing, another thing you can look at, and probably should look back here, but right here is your alignment grid view. And obviously we don't have a lot going on in our alignment anymore. But this essentially shows what all the different ge geometry of your alignment is. Your direction, your length, what type it is over here, and the stationing. Okay, so now we have created our alignment. So a couple things to note. One, our labels are there. We do have alignment labels, but they're only every 500 feet, and they're very tiny. So one thing we can do to make them less tiny, and you'll note over down in here is your annotation scale. Well, this specific style, and this won't be the same for everyone, but this specific style is set to be in 1 inch equals 50 feet. So if we adjust that, and that's normally what we put our PNP sheets at. So if we adjust that, now we're at 1 in 50. They're a little bit more normal size relative to the rest of the alignment and the rest of the objects. But we still want more we generally want stationing every 100 feet, and we'd like a tick mark every 50 feet. So what we can do is click on our alignment, right click, and we can edit the alignment labels. And again, this is based on our initial <coughs> style we had set. And then for a much longer project, perhaps you'd want labels just every 500 feet. But for ours, we want, so this is the ODOT tick major. Um, so this is the major station where we have a label here. We want to change that to 100 feet. And in the minor station where we just have a tick mark, we want that to be every 50 feet. We can hit apply, and now we see we've got our stationing every 100 feet, but we have kind of an inverted little tick mark at 50 feet. And so now we have a centerline alignment for this project. And if you come over here to your tool space, we can open up our alignments. And now centerline alignments, we can bring that down. And now you can see we have our centerline. And in the next video, we'll talk about how to create a profile and profile views. Um, and then down the road, we'll have sample line groups. But these are also AutoCAD objects but they are not off on their own because they're all tied to a specific alignment. So each alignment will have a profile and a profile view for which it, it lies in. And then as you create sample lines and section views, that will come in here. But again, they're all tied to this alignment. So we don't have a separate tab for them. They're all underneath here within the hierarchy. So that's it for this episode or video, um, just showing basic alignment creation tools. Thanks.